Welcome to a live, long, long overdue CK podcast here on the Basketball Zone Cowbell Kingdom YouTube channel. I'm your host, Leo Bias. Thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have given me the past month since August 6th since I moved into this new house. Bless God for the opportunity to allow my wife and I to buy a house first and foremost. And yes, we've had a lot of internet issues but a lot of you guys have, you know, wished a lot of good things upon us and have been very helpful and supportive. And we really, really appreciate that. So as you guys come on to this live stream, huge shout out to our guy, Corey, a uh, new member of the CK family. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, man. God bless you many, many more years. You're doing a phenomenal job uh, with all the draft coverage and all the great graphics. So we definitely appreciate that. And if you guys can wish Corey a happy birthday as well. Also, huge shout out to Valley Tire Center for always being a huge supporter of the Cowbell Kingdom platform. Thank you guys so much for all the support. It's really helped us out financially. Uh, to our guy, Brett Pajoya. They're always doing phenomenal business in Woodland, California. If you guys need tires, oil changes, lifted trucks, uh, lifted kits, sorry. They will take care of you. They have the full, full shop. Uh, it's just a great place to be. You'll see a lot of sports memorabilia, a lot of Red Sox stuff, uh, especially since Dustin Pedroia is the brother of Brett Pedroia, former MVP of the Boston Red Sox. And you'll see a lot of Kings memorabilia there too, man. Awesome family, and we always, always appreciate their support. And as you guys may already know, there is big news in Sacramento. The Kings have hired Monty McNair as the new head honcho of basketball decisions. This morning, we, we woke up with the official statements from the Sacramento Kings. But before they sent out the Monty McNair one, there was one under that. And that was Joe Dumars, which kind of, you know, throws you a little bit off the railings in terms of, hey, man, they're finally doing the right thing, right? And you're thinking to yourself, but they're the Kings, and they may end up screwing this up. <laughs> hey, what do we know? The first email that I get from the Kings, Joe Dumars, quote, is named Chief Strategy Officer. Now, this is what they said. The Sacramento Kings announced today that Joe Dumars has been named Chief Strategy Officer. In this new role, he will continue to report to the owner and chairman and help drive strategy across the organization's entire portfolio of activities, including business, basketball, new ventures, entertainment, and real estate. Per team policy, terms of the deal were not disclosed. It does not state that he will report to Monty McNair. Now, before I keep reading more stuff into it, let's read the following email, right? Which was King's name, Monty McNair, new general manager. Sacramento Kings announced today that the team has hired Monty McNair as general manager. In this role, McNair will be responsible for all decisions made in the Kings basketball operations department and serve as the team's top basketball executive reporting to the owner and chairman. Per team policy, terms of the deal were not disclosed. Ooh-wee. Ooh-wee. <laughs> oh, man, it's such a king's thing to do. So we'll get into that, okay? And we'll get into some of the background of uh, Mr. McNair and what he's done. Uh, lots of good stuff, without a doubt. A lot of doubt. Um, and we'll get into Sasha, who was the other candidate that lost out the job to McNair but we'll get into that as well and I'll get into some of the questions that you guys asked on Instagram via the Instagram story I'll try to answer every single one of you guys and yes the lines are open but first I want to get into Monty McNair and just be very specific about what I'm going to read and what do I think about that I'm sure some of the questions are asking that as well so I'll kind of hit on some of those questions right now First and foremost, let's read a little bit more of the Joe Dumars email from the Kings. And we'll also get into Sam Amick and what he had to say today as well um, on 1140 KHTK. And I'll also say this. 
I am going to try and get one of the ESPN beat writers for the Houston Rockets to get more information, more background information on how uh, McNair is. So stay tuned for that. I already sent out the emails. Hopefully they'll respond soon. I'm sure I'll get somebody to come on here and have that has more information about Monty. So going back to the Joe Dumars email, quote, Joe Joe's business acumen, along with his deep experience in the league, will serve as a valuable resource across the organization, said Vivek Ranadive. He has achieved proven results in the corporate world on top of many notable accolades as a player and basketball executive, and I am excited to have him serve in this position. The response from Joe Dumars, I want to thank Vivek for this opportunity and look forward to supporting both sides of the business as we work together to build the successful future that this franchise and community deserves. In June 2019, Dumars joined the Kings as a special advisor to the general manager and most recently served as an interim executive vice president of basketball operations. So he was kind of overseeing Vladi to some extent. Now those terms and conditions haven't really been disclosed by the organization but I do think it's a little bit funny. I'm not saying it can't work, and I'll say that right now because it's worked for the Clippers, how they have the whole dynamic with Jerry West and their current GM. But with so much instability with the Kings and essentially having a guy that won't report to your now new general manager is a bit skeptical. So... If the if the verbiage was Joe Dumars will report for basketball decisions to Vivek and Monty McNair, I would have been a lot happier. And I know a lot of Kings fans would have been a lot, a lot happier. But it doesn't say that. And that will always cause confusion. That at it, no matter what Monty McNair says that he loves Joe or whatever the case may be that he'll say next Wednesday because I just got the email that uh, they're introducing him as a press conference via Zoom next Wednesday. He's going to say, yeah, I love Joe, we, blah, 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 blah. Fact of the matter is, human instincts, we are human beings, okay? He will always, in the back of his mind, know that he that there is somebody else that could advise Vivek to say yes or no to his decisions, and owning the business, owning this company, I can't imagine having to have a yes or a no from someone who, in a sense, is a little bit higher than me because he's advising the owner. So just having that in the back of your mind is like, it creates that instability, especially if they don't get to a good start. Because when, once you start losing, hey, guess what? They're going to point the fingers at you at the end of the day. So it's tough, man. And I know it's worked for other organizations. That doesn't mean it's going to work here. And if it doesn't, like I said, get to a good start, it could end up being the same old story with the same old Sacramento Kings. So I understand that's how a lot of the corporate world works. But I feel like the Vex should have learned by now about certain dynamics that work and don't work, being in this, what, seven years now, seven, eight years now as the owner. And it seems like he's learned. Obviously, he's taking a lot of major steps in the right direction. But there's still stuff like this that have really hurt the Kings from top to bottom. Um, Sam Amick said this today as well. There were GMs, there were GM candidates that when they heard Joe Dumars was involved in the process, they said, no, thank you. And that's exactly what I'm saying without even knowing that information. Why would somebody want to come here and for the owner to claim, oh yeah, you have full autonomy, but at the same time, there's still somebody else that you may have to get a yes or a no from. So that creates instability and it's just not a situation you want to be if you're a brilliant young basketball mind. So I like to hire without question, but this 
naming of Joe Dumars to this really high role really kind of threw a left curve at me. And I would say the vast majority of the fan base. So I didn't like that. I'll be honest. I didn't like that. Could it work? Absolutely. But again, you have to be pessimistic because this team hasn't made the playoffs in 14 years. So it's okay to feel this way. Okay, if someone says, oh, no, use the P word for patience, that's all good and dandy. But I would have been okay with the P word and patience if they would have never named Joe Dumars. What's his position? Chief strategy officer. That's my opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right, but that's how I feel about the situation. So let's read the following statement or the following email. Right? I already read the first part of it. This is what Vivek had to say about Monte. Monte is one of the NBA's top basketball minds who has played an instrumental role in building several winning teams in Houston. I am excited to bring his extensive experience and vision on board to lead our basketball operations department. And it is my pleasure to welcome Monty and his family to Sacramento. Monty's response was, I am thrilled to join the Kings organization and honored to shape the franchise's bright future for the team's loyal fans. I would like to thank Vivek for this opportunity and look forward to becoming a part of the Sacramento community. A native of Oak Park, McNair returns to his home state from the Houston Rockets, where he has held the title of assistant general manager since 2018. Prior to that, McNair led the analytic efforts of the Rockets basketball operations department, where he worked closely with Houston's coaching staff to provide on-court strategy and analysis along with opponent preparation. He is a former athlete. That's... So for all the people who are haters on analytics and analytical haters, he's a nerd. He's compete. Well, he is both a nerd and a jock at the same time. He is a former athlete. Okay. He is a former athlete. Uh, played football at Princeton University, majored in computer science, you know, worked as a researcher at Stats LLC in 2006. And again, as I said, native of Oak Park, California. You could get the best of both worlds with this guy. And he's definitely a qualified candidate. And I'm happy that the Kings hired him. But again, a little Joe too, that little Joe Dumars curveball kind of, kind of ruined a little bit of the excitement. And... It's okay because the Kings have failed to make their fan base happy the past 14 years. And you have to raise your eyebrow and just think, man, is this a Kings move? Like, is this going to happen all over again? Has Vivek learned? These are all valid questions at the end of the day. And it's okay to, to feel that way, man. I feel you. I feel that pain. How's everybody doing, man? <clears throat> Make sure you slap that like button, share with all your NBA fans, all your Kings fans. Today will be King-centric. Uh, the grind is back, y'all. And if y'all know who I am, a, a lot of you guys, obviously I recognize, a lot of you guys are the loyal ones. I've always been here since day one. Y'all know how I work, how I conduct myself. It's straight grind, man. I'm energized. I'm back. And if you guys watched my breakdown yesterday, on the Kings versus the Mavericks defensive breakdown. It was depressing without a doubt, but it gives you perspective on what the Kings have to work on. And as I've said, this team lacks a lot of players who have high basketball IQ overall, but really bad defensive IQ. And that's including Darren Fox. But make no mistake about it. He has a lot of mental breakdowns. He's a young player, experience with Trump, all that. He has all the tools in the in, in the box to be phenomenal, to be an elite defensive player. No doubt about it. But as of today, what we've seen in the first three years, he's had a lot of mental breakdowns. He's, he's also had a lot of great moments as well defensively. But as the best player and as the leader of this organization, the leader of this team, he needs to be better. And he knows that. He knows that. He'll, he'll be the first to tell you that. He'll be the first to tell you that. I promise you that. Because he holds himself to a high standard. And I, and I know he does. 
So let's recap briefly uh, a little bit of McNair's NBA experience. Obviously, he's under that Daryl Morey tree. Uh, before I read some of his stuff, let's get this out the way. Some of the names that have been under Daryl Morey, Sam Hinkie, Dennis Lindsay, uh, Gerson Rosas, Arturas, Karnasovas, all guys who are now in lead role positions. It's pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty damn good. So, he was uh, brought into Maury's staff in 2007 as a senior analyst. Uh, after almost six years, Ringnera was promoted to director of basketball operations in 2013. He was promoted to vice president of basketball operations in 2015, and then he was promoted to assistant GM in 2018. So he's been around the league. He has relationships, which is a good thing. Something that Vladi honestly didn't have coming into the, coming into his role, right? Having relationship with having relationships with agents who honestly run the NBA. You have to have that, man. You have to have the camaraderie with those guys. Honestly, it's so so important not to burn your bridges. I think this guy is the man for that. Um, and I know a lot of people liked Sashin, who I thought was, obviously, he's less experienced. Um, and they worked together in Houston. But I felt like they were both qualified. And there were also rumors, right, speculation that they could both work together. Um, and it probably would have been with Sashin being the head guy and then McNair being the guy under him. Which some people may ask, well, why would Monte do that? Well, there's a lot of speculation that Houston could get rid of Daryl Morey. They, uh, their head coach, Mike D'Antoni, will no longer be there as, as of right now. So there could be a lot of movement in Houston. So that would make sense, honestly, if he would have just taken the same position in Sacramento, but under a guy that he's familiar with in Sashin. It didn't happen that way. And Vivek felt like he was more qualified, which I don't blame him for that. I like the move. I think someone asked on Instagram from one on the scale to one to ten, how do you how do you like the McNair hire? That was from J underscore Rodriguez ninety one. Like like I said, from one to ten, I would say a seven because I want Adam Simon as my number two. Or as the dream guy was Bobby Webster from Toronto. I didn't get Bobby. I didn't get Adam. So after that, to me, there were a lot of qualified guys like Calvin uh, Calvin Booth. Who, as you guys have seen, the Nuggets are having a great, great time right now. Uh, upsetting the Los Angeles Clippers and their front office with Tim Conley. Uh they have a lot of good young players and a bright future ahead of them with a very good head coach and Mike Malone. So Calvin Booth was an option. Sasha, uh, McNair, and uh, the guy from the Hawks. So, you know, from one from in the scale from one to ten, I would say it's a seven. I'm not mad at it. Uh, I'm excited about it. But again, that little curveball about Joe Dumars really, really upset me because that's what losing organizations continue to do. Like the league, I would say the league in general is laughing. Like, man, same old Vivek. It's probably what they're saying. And I don't blame them. Like the Kings lend themselves to this type of stuff. No secret, man. No secret at all. Basketball guru, man, what's going on? Uh, don't be excited. Joe Dumars isn't the right guy. Yeah, he won a chip. I forget he drafted Darko. Kings don't need more draft busts anymore. And Joe is bust all the way. You can have contracts as you like, but the Kings aren't a free agency destination. I agree 100% with that, so they must draft well. A good thing is that they kept Ken Canella, who I love. A uh, great guy. I've, I've had great conversations with him. Great cap expert. So it's nice to have another guy under a guy like Amante McNair. So I like that. I wonder if Sashin 
Gupta will be hired in some capacity too. Highly doubt it. I, I would say 99.9% he's not coming. He's staying with his guy as the assistant in Minnesota. They got the number one pick. They got Cat. They got D'Lo. No reason for him to come to Sacramento. It just wouldn't make sense. Uh, what are people saying? Congratulations on the new house. Dennis B. Appreciate you, man. What's up, Devin? He's back. How's everybody doing, man? How is everybody doing? So that's pretty much it. And that's how I feel about this whole situation. I think it's going to be definitely going to take time. Uh, how fast we'll, we'll know a little bit more. I'm trying to dive more into what his philosophy is. Uh, it seems like, well, the Rockets were ultra aggressive, but you could be ultra aggressive when you have a guy like James Harden. The Kings don't have that guy right now. De'Aaron Fox has the upside, has the potential to be as I've said, a top 10 to 15 player in the NBA without question. Like, he has that much talent. But until that happens, then you have to build to the draft. It's just that simple because guys won't come and sign with Sacramento. So you have to make aggressive trades. But when you make aggressive trades, you give up a lot of draft flexibility for the future of the organization, which is what Vladi did when he made that Sixers awful trade. Getting rid of Nick Stauskas, Carl Landry, and Jason Thompson. And who else was it? Point is, it was an awful trade. And yeah, he created space, but he signed mediocre free agents. Let's just be honest. Um, and the team wasn't any good. So when you give up your future for, let's again, average to below average free agents. It makes it tough, and I don't think Monte will do that. I think if he decides to trade, say, a Marvin Bagley or a Buddy Yield or a Bogdan Bogdanovich, he's going to want to get draft picks in return to build what, what, what you already have. I think that's the direction he's going to take. Um, Laura Claire says Xfinity or at t So the whole story real quick, man. Um, four texts came out of Xfinity from August 6th to, I would say, last week or two weeks ago, right before my Cancun trip. And they would all say the same thing. Like, they have to do the street bearing and make a hole through the house and you got to get city permits and all that and they have to pay for it. So I think that was one of the huge delays. So I came back from Cancun and still on internet and I was like, this is no way. And yes, I only have 50 downloads and 10 uploads, which I'm connected to an Ethernet cord right now, which I'm getting supposedly the full 50 and 10, which is super slow, especially, and I don't know what this looks like right now, hopefully well, but it's super slow. But as I said, it's better than having no internet. And I think that's important. So not having internet since August 6th is just ridiculous. Um, unfortunately, AT&T doesn't offer their fiber here in my area, which is a Rosemont area. I wish they did because I know that their gig is super fast. But as of today, I have to settle with 50 and 10. And who knows? I might have a strategy behind how my back and just have uh, pull some strings and, and do some stuff. But as of today, we're going to have to deal with 50 and 10, which is slow because every all devices use up the bandwidth of the Internet. And as of right now, I'm going to have all devices off and just have this and just try to get the smoothest stream that I can. So if there is some buffering, I apologize. It's out of my control, man. I'm just happy to be back and just talking sports again. I'm hoping that I start streaming a lot of football stuff. So if you guys are football fans, definitely start streaming on my personal YouTube channel, which is going to be a little bit of everything, traveling, uh, all types of sports. And I'll kind of obviously talk about it here. This is more basketball centric, so I'll keep it separate. Um, yeah, if you guys haven't followed me or subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's in the description below. The, the links are available. And if you guys do want to support uh, with some merch, the merch is available as well. There's links from our Teespring store. It's available in the description box as well. Let's get to some of the questions. Again, if you guys want to call in, uh, you can. The phone lines are open. The number is available in the description box. 
uh, basketball guru says, bro, I have 150 and 100 fiber in Serbia for $30 a month. That is insane, bro. Like, you're so lucky. 150 and 100 is just phenomenal, man. Like, I was supposed to get 1,050 from Xfinity, which which is good. Like, that's that's fine. I, I'm, I'd, I'd be happy with that. But again, with all the permits and not knowing when they're going to come, it could take another month. For all we know, you know, with all the COVID situation and the money situation and the permits from the city, I didn't want to risk it, man. And we needed Wi-Fi. I mean, come on. In today's society, without Wi-Fi, it's tough. Definitely tough. Ah, freak. Someone says a little grainy, but it's okay. Yeah, see, I, I can't. I can't control that. I heard McNair uses some type of camera to analyze players and get data or something. What you think about that? Haven't heard about that. Again, uh, I'll dive more into that when I have some rocket beat guys that, that, that cover that team. And to get more information like that, I'll make sure uh, to ask them that. Make sure to DM me that on Instagram. DM me that question. That way I ask and I don't forget about it. Someone says, supposedly the USA is the best country in the world. Laughable. It's crazy, bro. Like some areas, like South Sac, no disrespect to South Sac, but how does South Sac have fiber internet and not my area, which is a lot nicer? Like that that just doesn't make any sense to me. The fact that I have, because I pay my, my parents, I, I pay my parents cable and, and internet in Stockton, and I have two accounts with AT&T. Over there, I got 100 up and 20 down, or sorry, 100 down and 20 up. It's like, how is Stockton have more bandwidth and just faster internet speeds in my area? That just doesn't make any sense. So a, a big, big frown, big, big frown in at and It's just ridiculous, bro. Um, will Eman be more involved in the future? Absolutely, man. We're just waiting to get things started out with all this pandemic and stuff like that, man. Um, Ron Ultra says, I live in South Sac, so laughing my ass out. Hey, man, no, again, no, no disrespect to you, bro. It's just like, I don't get it. Like, everybody knows South Sac has a negative uh, perception. You know what I mean? Like, there's no secret to that. And I, and I get it why my tech guy that installed it today, he explained why there's fiber in South Sac. But at the same time, it's like it doesn't make sense. Like the good areas don't have it, and good areas have really slow internet. So definitely, Abraham says, "Don't hate on South Sac speed, bro." <laughs> bro, I ain't hating. Just lend me some of the damn speed so I can stream this and look crisp. Because on my end, I look crispy as hell. Like I look hella good. Uh, but obviously, whatever it's outputting to the world, I have no control over. So definitely, it's it's unfortunate. So let's let's get to some of the questions, man. From T Copper, T Copper Noel, my boy, would you trade for Tobias or Zach Levine if you had the choice? No. Do you think the Kings will fire Walton? I think they. I think the new GM should be able to bring in his own guy because if they don't, as I've said on multiple streams before and recently on Instagram Live. I think the new GM should bring in his own guy. And it's not me bashing on Luke. You know, I hate when people lose their jobs. But at the same time, he's going to be compensated. He's going to get paid the same amount if he's coaching or not coaching. The problem is, does ownership want to pay another guy again? That is the real question, right? Because they're going to have to pay the new guy. And then Luke, and they just finished paying off Dave. It's a lot of money, a lot of millions, man. And as a fan, you're like, yeah, do it. But as a business owner and Vivek and the, and the minority owners, you're like, man, I don't know if I want to do that. But again, if you don't do that, then you're doing the same thing, the same mistakes. You're committing the same mistakes all over again. Let's remember, they hired Mike Malone. They brought in Pete Del Sandro. Conflict right away. Wasn't this guy. George Carl, right? He brought in George Carl. Then Vladi. Vladi inherited George Carl. Wasn't his guy. And even Dave wasn't his guy. So now you expect Monte 
to inherit a Luke Walton who has a losing record, who hasn't shown to be actually a really good coach. Like he hasn't been, he, he hasn't shown to be a good coach during his Laker tenure and especially his Kings tenure. So yeah, he had a great run with the Warriors, but I think a lot of coaches would have had the same exact run with the Warriors. No disrespect to Luke, no disrespect to anybody. Like that team is the best team we've seen in the past 25 years. I mean, come on. Let's be honest here, right? That frame looking nice, bro. What's up, my brother? I gotta bring you back on, bro. I gotta bring you back on, brother. Skip, 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 skip. Um, that's how I feel about that. So, I would do it. Like if feels up to me, I would love to bring in a guy like a Mike D'Antoni. So again, it just depends on what coach you bring, what your philosophy is. So a lot of the question is, well, what would I do, right? What type of players would I go after? It just depends on what the coach wants to do. So you take a look at what your personnel is. And right now, the Kings are built to be a great offensive team, to move the ball and have a free-flowing offense, which they don't have with Luke Walton. And I understand his idea of having an infrastructure and building for the future. But the problem is when he came in, he used India experience as an excuse, which is a valid excuse without question, right? Because he's trying to install a whole new offense and make them run better execution plays in the half court. But this team was best when they would run and run a high up-tempo offense. But it seems like Luke was under the impression that he had a four years, right? And that's what they told him. Things change in the NBA. There's a thing called recency bias. What have you done for me lately? And hey, guess what? There's a new GM in town. So unfortunately, head coaches don't always have all this time that they think that they do. When you're a bad organization like the Kings, you can't really come in here thinking that way. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, Luke should have known that. Historically speaking, seeing all the coaches before him, he must have known that. He must have known that. He took over a guy who led the Kings to the most wins in a long time. So that day when he got hired, what was the first thing that I said? I said, it doesn't matter if Vladi got extended. It doesn't matter if Luke got a four-year deal. There's going to be an abundance of pressure on this guy to perform and to take this team to the next level because that's what Vladi kept saying. We need to get to the next level, and Luke is that guy. Obviously, Luke approached it a little bit differently. Like, if he had more time, problem was he didn't have any time. And now you're seeing the results of that, an angry, frustrated fan base. That's the time frame that we all see now. So if that was me again, I would. I don't think they'll do it because of the money situation. But if they want to do things right, they should do it. And again, it's not a personal thing. It's not me attacking Luke by any means. It's just me being honest. If you want to run things the right way and start doing things the right way, the right thing to do is to allow his new GM to choose his own coach. And if that's Mike D'Antoni, if that's Nate McMillan, if that's anybody else, that's anybody else, so be it. Even if I don't like who they hire, so be it. But I don't want any excuses and any, oh, well, he did not, well, no. Do things the right way. Same thing with my fish tank, right? Called the saltwater guy and I asked him, well, what's the cheap route to do? Like, what's the cheapest? He goes, honestly, man, you're doing things the right way because you're starting fresh. I took 18 hours to send that fucking thing. Sorry, excuse my French. Painted in white, 135 gallons. And you have to know that there is a large upfront investment when you start a saltwater fish tank. There's a live rock or the live coral, depending on what you want to do. I want exotic, aggressive fish, like the lionfish, like the little panther uh, groupers, like the um, like the other one. I'm, I'm slipping on them. But I'm going to need live rock. And guess what? I need 
200 pounds of live rock. And that's going to be like three or $400. Easy. <clears throat> Salt, uh, the sand, another $200. Fish, $100 a pop, probably. Then we're from 50 to 100, 50 to like 200, really. Lighting, all the salt. They made me buy an RODI water filter because you need the right water to put and mix in your fish tank. So use that analogy and now compare that to the Kings organization. Start doing things the right way, even if it costs you more up front. So if it requires you to pay Luke Walton, whatever his salary is next year, so be it. If you want to do things the right way, it's going to cost you money. Plain and simple. Some of y'all may be laughing at my analogy, but it's just real life, man. You got to do things the right way. You knew coming into this project, and I knew coming into this project, that if I didn't want to half-ass it and go freshwater again, that it was going to cost me a grip. I'm probably going to be in it like, you know, before I even get fish, about $1,500. But those are things that I knew coming in. If I wanted what I want, and what do I want? I want saltwater fish. It's just what it is. Like, I have to make other sacrifices in different areas and just, you know, subtract from that if if I have to. And for the king's sake, they have to think like, hey, man, I want my guy to succeed. I want Monty McNair to succeed. I must give him what he wants. And if they keep Luke, yeah, he's going to say, oh, I love Luke and blah, blah, blah. They all say that. Like, they all said that. I remember Vladi saying that about Dave. Next thing you know, what is it, three years later, I, he just wasn't my guy. Like, Luke's my guy. Guys will always say what they got to say to please people, man. Guys, are, guys have been set up to fail every time they take a job in Sacramento. Change that now. Have a fresh start and allow your guy to fail or to succeed, but give him a fair shot. Please, Vivek, give him a fair shot. That's all Kings fans ask is to give Monty McNair a fair shot. That's it. That's it, man. Someone says, Warren Ellis says, so glad you are not the owner. I agree, Guru. Developed developed nets and got them right. I want him number one and Nate number two. Nate's teams play the hard with the urgency and give all on defense. Atkinson is a good for the Kings because of his development. Coach, Kings need that. Oh, okay. So he's talking about Kenny Atkinson. Um, what's up, brother? You finally have internet now and and if I look like yesterday. What's up, Hensi? Uh do you think Buddy is gone? Okay, so that was the next question. I think Buddy is gone. I don't know what Monty is going to want to do with them. Um, obviously, Buddy is very displeased with the organization. He He's felt disrespected in so many ways. Like, they give me this money, but then they want me to do this, this role. And, you know, they set him up to fail pretty much. And he made mistakes without question. Like, he's awful defensively. I've always said that. Always. But you know what you get out of him. Same with Bogey. Same with Bielitsa. Like, if you guys watch the breakdowns, like, even De'Aaron, like, they have so many mental breakdowns, man. It's not just Buddy, man. Like, it's it's on film. Bielitsa is just unbelievably bad defensively. And that's my boy. Like, that. Bielitsa and I have a great relationship. But I have to be honest, he is bad defensively. Like, and it doesn't make sense because he's so smart offensively. That's one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Like, a guy who has a high basketball IQ offensively, but then completely, completely opposite on defense. Like, that makes no sense to me at all. Um, the funny thing is that Divac was talking the Kings, was taking that the Kings need to, will Fox play center now that McNair is calling the shots? No, he will not. Do you trade Buddy and Yogi for Paul George, Shamit, and the first? What about an assistant coach GM? Yes, I would trade Buddy and Yogi for Paul George. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. Just, the Clippers would never, ever do that. Um, need to run and change the coach. Hey, Leo, glad your internet is working. Oh, it looks like 
Looks like I did a good job. What's going on, Ray Allen? How do I look, bro? Do, do I look blurry? Because let me check myself, man. Because someone said that I, that I don't look crisp because on my end, again, I don't know what I'm outputting, but I know that. Ah, uh, I look good. I look good. I think I look good. I think I look good, man. But yeah, man, appreciate all the support, man. Uh, did I cover everything? I guess there's a few more questions that I'll that I'll answer before I go watch that Celtics game. Who was winning, by the way? Uh, let me know. Let me know who's winning. Eman says, "What defensive players can help the Kings next season?" Again, I've said this on previous streams that I believe the Kings could go after a guy like an OG on Anubi. Uh, and a Norman Powell. Like, I think it'd be a win-win, honestly, because Marvin Bagley ho would hold value for the Raptors. Like, I can imagine Bagley, if, if he stays healthy, in that winning organization, world-class organization, like, they could really get the best out of him. And if you can include him in a trade that could get you both the Powell and an OG, then I would do something like that. Now... The contracts and all that and the fillers, I don't know. Um, we would have to play with the NBA trade machine and see if there would be draft compensation by any way. We don't know, but something along those lines where if you can get two of those guys who are just tough-nosed, gritty guys, very good defensive players who can also score um, their open shots and Playing with Jaren Fox, you're going to get open shots because, well, he's the fastest player in the league and he's phenomenal in transition. So I think those type of guys would really fit. And on this channel, I also hope to get into defensive, sorry, into draft coverage um, and more breakdowns as well. Uh, that's what my whiteboard says. I don't want to release some stuff and do a Vlade. <laughs> uh but yeah, man, Heat 47, Celtics 60. Thank God. I bet heavy today, too. Uh, you don't look blurry. Looks good. You just need to slightly center the camera. That's it, really. It's, is it this way? Maybe I just got a light. Eh, you're right. Like a little bit. Yeah, this way, huh? Or this way. I don't know. Appreciate that, brother. Celtics are up. I love an OG Bagley in our pick for number two. Then we draft LaMelo. Oh, LaMelo. Someone said LaMelo. What's going on, Ashley? Uh, Birdie Maker says, is it me or does D'Antoni have a little bit of an to him? Bring, bring in a culture, define roles, immediate respect. I don't love him, but damn, do I love him for Fox. Bro, I've been saying that for a long time, man. Like, D'Antoni and Fox is a, mat, is a match made in heaven. He's going to elevate his game. He's going to status pat, pat his stats, sorry. Um, and he does well with guards. Steve Nash, James Harden, MVPs. Not to say that they weren't great before him or they weren't going to be great without him, but it's something about a system that if you play in that system and you can do the, the things that they can do, you're going to succeed in it. And... I would love Mike D'Antoni with this team. Like, I would love. And then add, like, these guys, like, these ancillary pieces, like an OG, like a uh, uh, Norman Powell, like the Shamets of the world, like those type of guys that are gritty players that can hit an open shot when needed, like the P.J. Tuckers of the world. Like, those guys, man, their skills are to be available and to just play hard, to bring that energy that's a skill set, man. And I know people overrate that or they, I'm sorry, they, they underrate that and they underappreciate that a lot. You, you shouldn't do it, man. Like you should really appreciate when someone brings it 110 every single night. Like if you're not affecting the game offensively and you are defensively, coaches are going to love you. Coaches are going to love you. Plain and simple, bro. Shout out to new music too, man. Got the merch on. Uh, again, if you guys want to support the Cowboy Kingdom platform, we got dope merch. Links are available in the description. Uh, again, uh, let's say if you were the me manager, what players would you keep on the roster? That's from Har underscore Sand. Uh, 
without a, I mean, cop out answer, but De'Aaron Fox, Rashawn Holmes, and then you just see what you got there, depending on what coach you have and what and what the philosophy is from the GM. It's just such a such a difficult question to to answer, man, because you just don't know right now. Like it's just we're in September, you know what I mean? Like it's hard. We have a draft upcoming. A lot of decisions have to be made. We just got a new GM, so it's definitely a hard question to ask. But the cop out answer is De'Aaron Fox and Rashawn Holmes, without question. Uh Trust level with the new back office, how it may impact draft or trade packages. Again, too early to say, but the Kings have the number 12 pick. There's some good players coming out. I think that that could help the Kings right away. Um, and, and, and we'll get into that in, in a different podcast. Uh, thoughts on the hire and what should be done to have a 40-plus win season? Again, tough to say, tough to answer that question. Do things right. <laughs> I think I've gone over that. Like, do things right. That's how you get to 40 wins, by doing things right. I wouldn't be mad at Dan Tony, just worried about it. Defense would take a leap forward. Uh, worry about if the defense would take a leap forward. We are so bad defensively, but I'm not opposed to Dan Tony. What do you think about him helping our defense too? About who? Atkinson or Dan Tony? Uh, chances of seeing a lot of new faces next season. Bogey and free agency, buddy traded, contract expiring again. Could happen, man. That's, or the first day, really, today, right? Officially, I went to new GM. And next week, we'll have more clarity. I'll have more clarity because I'll do more digging. Now I have Wi-Fi. I can, you know, I'm going to interview some people from the Rockets and just try to get more information. Um, I'm actually friends with Daryl Morey on Facebook, strangely, so... Let's see if he responds. This. Let's see if he if he'll respond. Um, I'm sure he's again like, say he does respond to me. He's gonna say Monte's a great guy. Like he's great. He's just he's that. He'll never say anything negative about a guy. But I think it's important to to distinguish those type of things, right? Mike D'Antoni is the one now. Coach Kings need to develop and find the new players to draft and develop. Alexson been there, done that, taking bus and returning them. Yeah, like, I wouldn't be mad at, at Kenny Atkinson. Like, I like him a lot. What would you like to see McNair do for his first move? Oof. I think his first move is going to be extending Darren Fox. I would think, like, sign the extension and it kicks in the following season. Um, it's tough to say. I think his first move, what I would like him to do is to draft the right guy, whoever that guy is. Honestly, like, that's all that matters right now. Like, your focus has to be November 18th, draft day. And and then try to scope out what you want to do. Well, I'll take that back. The first thing is, are they going to allow you to bring in your own guy, right? Your own head coach. Then, then we go from there. But yeah, man, I appreciate all support again. Huge shout out again to Valley Tire Center. Much love and respect to that company who's really supported the Cabo Kingdom platform for a long time now. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys can, you know, leave us a review on iTunes as well. CK Podcast with Leo Bias. Um, I would really appreciate you guys. It would really help us out a lot to grow and to start meddling into the apple itunes and the whole spotify stuff as well we're available everywhere so if you have android we got spotify and i'm sure we're on all the other tuning radio and all those other apps as well thank you guys so much for all the support and i'm glad to be back and i'll let you guys know with the more stable schedule probably starting next week but as of right now i hope this was somewhat educational and it was just nice to be back again appreciate all the patience and all the love and support thank you guys so much i'll see you guys on the next one